I've bought a first generation Porsche Cayenne Turbo off the internet, completely blind without even seeing it. I paid seven and a half thousand pounds for it, but it was really far away in Cornwall that I just got someone to deliver it to me, but there was a problem. On the journey delivering it to me, the delivery driver called me to say that a warning light had come on to say the car was low on oil, so they topped it up. But it was a bit worrying. And then when they did arrive, the car was overheating and absolutely spraying its coolant everywhere. Come and have a look, come and have a look. Look, you can see some of the remnants there. Not really ideal. On the short test drive, it didn't exhibit any problems. It was only on that like long drive to me that it started to have issues. However, if I had gone to see it, what I could have done is use my Carly OBD reader. And it might have revealed some issues with the car that you can't see with your eyes. So let's have a look what's going on with this car. I'm gonna plug it in, turn the ignition on. I'm gonna connect it to my phone. I'm gonna scan, see what it says. It's scanning the car. I'm really hoping there's nothing serious. <laughs> this could be awful. Let's find out what's going on. Oh good, it's come back with a bad health status. There are two issues apparently. Let's find out what they are. The first is a fault code P1372. Valve lift control bank one. Let's find out a bit more information about that. So that could be an issue with a solenoid. Not terrible, but not ideal. There could also be something to do with a failing EVAP purge valve, which is less of an issue. Okay, right, let's hope it's that. Next problem is a P2181, and that's to do with the cooling system. Surprise, surprise. Now that could be because the car is not running at the proper temperature, which may be because all that coolant leaked out of it, although it could actually be because the thermostat is stuck either open or closed, which means a broken thermostat, which would be more costly to replace. Uh, now, what I'm gonna do is actually clear these fault codes and then I'm gonna see if they reappear. I'd probably still buy the car with those fault codes, but what I'd have done is use them to negotiate a lower price from the seller. Now, if you're thinking about buying a used car, make sure you get a Carly OBD reader and take it along with you to interrogate the car because you might find some faults that you can't see with your eyes. And you can then use that to either make the right decision on the car and walk away or to negotiate a better price. The Carly scanner can read a wide variety of ECUs depending on the make and age of car. For instance, on newer Porsches, as well as engine and gearbox, it can read ECUs for things like the navigation, steering wheel, body control unit, light system, and more. One of the great things about Carly is that for certain brands and vehicles, you can do coding. This allows you to change some of the car's features. For instance, on my old BMW X5, I've used Carly to make the car give an optical confirmation when I lock it. So if you follow the link in the description or the pinned comment, you can go to Carly to order your own OBD reader and use the discount code MAT15 for 15% off. Alternatively, you can click on the pop-out banner appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen to go to Carly. Or if you're watching on Smart TV, just follow the QR code appearing on the screen now to go to the website. Do you know what I'm gonna do now though? I think I need to take this car to someone who knows a lot about Porsche Cayennes and appraise it, find out a bit more about these faults and tell me if I bought a good car or a bad car. Let's do it. I've come to Porsche of Great Britain in Reading and I'm gonna leave this old KM with one of their techs and he's gonna give it a thorough going over to find out what's wrong with this car. And he's also gonna assess it to give his verdict on what he thinks of this particular Cayenne and whether I made a good buy or a bad buy. Now on the way down, I have noticed that the car never seems to get up to operating temperature. So I think that could definitely mean there's a problem with the thermostat. I've also noticed a bit of a strange coolanty smell about the place. So maybe there's something else going wrong as well. Now, another thing I wanted to check was whether those faults that I cleared use my Carly app have cleared. So let's just run that again. Unfortunately, no, they're still there, which means they are recurring faults, which will require the car to be fixed. Ah. Anyway, I'm going to leave this car with Porsche for a few days and hopefully they won't find anything too sinister nor expensive wrong with it. I'm a bit nervous. I'd like to introduce you to Lewis Ingram. Hi, Matt. So I bought you my car a week ago. You've had a good look over it and now you're going to give me your verdict on it. But I think before we do that, you need to just explain your credentials. Uh, yeah, so I've been working here for... PCGB, Porsche Cars Great Britain, about 19 years now. So yeah, I remember these uh, pretty well. Lewis is the guy that preps 
all of Porsche Great Britain's press cars, don't you? So the cars yeah. that I drive and review, and yes. all the other journalists, you prep them. But you started off as a, a normal mechanic. Normal technician, yeah. Normal yeah. technician, working on cars back in the day, including the KN. Yep. Right, so you know about these cars. I do, yeah. And you know about their issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they have a few issues, don't they? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Little they're, bit. they're all right. They're, they're all right, and they are quite lovable. It's quite a cool car. Yeah. You spent some time looking at it. We talked about some of the issues that I had. I told you about them, and you found some other ones, and we'll get to that in a moment. But what I'd like you to do is basically grade my car. Okay. So I want you to talk around the exterior, the interior. We'll have a look underneath it. And we'll also drive it and you will basically rate it out of 10 in yeah. those separate areas and give me an overall score, what you think of this car, as yeah. well as talking me through some of the problems and um, how I might need to fix them. How long you got? Right, what we're going to do, we're going to start off with Lewis appraising the exterior of this car. I'm going to film on my little camera here the yeah. bits that you pick out. So away you go, Lewis. Do your worst. Well. Nice of you to wash it for me, Matt. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I don't like washing cars. It's just to hide the uh, damage. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, so, first thing I've noticed is this. You've got a bit of a large scratch going on here. Yes, that is quite a scratch, isn't it? Wasn't me. Okay. Came like that. Got a little dink there, I noticed. It's, oh, not, yeah. it's not the end of the world. No, I didn't notice that. But, uh, yeah, it's not too bad on here. It's all pretty straight. A little bit of moisture there. That's, yeah. In the indicator repeater. So you've got a little crack there in the light. Oh yeah, dear. Just, just got in. Okay. But not the end of the world again. A bit of a scuff there. Yes. Oh, and that's pushed in as well. Yeah, so this is what happened, right? I bought this car online, hadn't yep. seen it, and a delivery driver went and got it for me. And when the seller was manoeuvring it off his driveway, he drove it into his other car, which was a Vauxhall Astra van. Excellent. And, and that is the result. <laughs> now, had I been there, I'd have instantly gone like, that's 500 quid off the price, thank you very much. But because I wasn't there, I couldn't do that. And the delivery driver just brought it to me and goes, oh, the guy crashed it into his own car. This is, this is what happened. That's definitely the way you buy cars. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I buy them. And that's why I'm here talking to you, because I'm wondering what I've done exactly. That's the front. Let's go check out the side. OK, so um, looking at the brakes here, they look pretty good, actually. You've got quite a bit of meat on them. Pads are about 50% worn. One thing I've noticed, though, these wheels, did they come with it? Basically, when I bought this car, it came on these wheels. Mm -hmm. The um, delivery driver said that the chap mentioned that he had some other wheels. They were in some lockup somewhere. Fortunately, the delivery driver insisted on going to that lockup to get those wheels. I paid an extra like 50 quid for them because they were the proper turbo wheels. They're Excellent. the, what are these, 18s? Yep. So they're the 19 inches. Good. But they didn't look like the turbo wheels that I've seen on images. They were like the previous generation, like the 955, not the 957s. Yep. But he claims that they were original for the car. Yeah, when I checked the spec out for you, they are the originals for the car. Okay, so, yeah. so that's good. So I need to put those on, right? Yeah, because these I think these are off a later car. And too small. They're too small. They don't, they don't look right, do they? <laughs> they don't look right. They look like castles off a sofa. <laughs> what else can you see? So other than the fact that it's filthy, it's pretty straight. There's no massive like dents or anything like that. Uh huh. There's a little bit of pin striping. You can see a little bit there. What do you mean by pin striping? So it's hit a tree or a bush or something like that, and it's done like a line right. just see about there. A bit more. Up Does that here mean well. it's probably been off roading, or is it just someone like down a lane? Down a lane, probably. We'll see if it's been off roading when we get it in the air. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's pretty straight. Let's have a look at the door. See if. Why are you checking the door? They've got a tendency of dropping these okay. doors. This one seems okay. A little bit, a little bit, but not, not terrible. So what do you mean, they drop on their hinges? Yeah, so because they're quite heavy, yeah. the doors tend to drop a little bit like that. Heavy as in quality? The quality, yeah. <laughs> German engineering. <laughs> yeah. How about the back one? Is that all right? Yeah, it's fine. Literally haven't yeah. opened that door before. There you go. That's, that's absolutely fine. Well, at least it opens. <laughs> Down this side seems reasonably OK. Yeah, I'd say so. OK, so then what can you spot here at the back of the car? Uh, first thing I can see is, I'm not sure where your chrome's gone. That just has all disappeared. That's so, white now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's white. That should be chrome or aluminium. I'm not sure what's happened there. What do you think might have happened? So maybe it's had a little bit of a whack at some point and somebody's removed that. I don't is know. that original or is it like aftermarket, do you think? I think it's original, but it's just lost its top coating. I was actually looking through some of the documents that came with this car and it seems to have been to the body shop twice for a couple of thousand pounds worth of work each time. And this car did spend quite a bit of its life in London. Do you reckon it might have just had a... Potentially, yeah. I mean, London does attract that kind of uh, accident, so... 
yeah, it's quite potential there. Is there anything else you can see? A bit of moisture in your light, again, a bit like the front, maybe a little bit worse. Well, there's it? quite a lot in there, isn't there? Oh my yeah. God, look. Yeah. Am I gonna have to replace this? Well, it, ideally, yes. You're not quite at the goldfish in there level yet. Right, okay. But all it is, is you've got a crack here on the corner and the moisture's just getting inside. Oh, I can see that crack, yeah, just from that. It's yeah. doing all just, that. Yeah, it just gets inside there. Oh my gosh. And are these quite plentiful on the used market? There must be, there like must on be, eBay yeah. or something yeah. like that, yeah. yeah? Yeah, there must be. We've made plenty of these cars, so. So not too expensive, but I'm not gonna bother with that just yet. Are they easy to replace? Could I do it? Yeah, they're quite easy to do. Okay. A couple of bolts. Good, I'll, I might try and do that myself. Is there anything else here at the back? So everything looks pretty straight as it should be. Panel gaps are all pretty good. Let's have a look in the tailgate. It's What's heavy, it? isn't it? heavy, isn't it? <laughs> Is that a good thing or bad? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, you've yeah. got some droop. It's not, it's not the worst, but that's, yeah, they're starting to, yeah, you've got a bit of a, a strut wear issue there. So where are the struts? So they're up inside here. That does so not look damper. easy to replace. I mean, I've done a few. They're, they're okay. So how many hours of labour to do that? Because, I mean, if it was just a normal strut, you'd do it in like half an hour, right? Yeah, probably a couple of hours. Yeah. Oh you have, there's two um, struts. There's one for the glass tailgate as well, because the glass tailgate opens on these. Shall we find out if this one opens we, on? Let's have a look, shall we? Go on, how do you open it? So you press the little button under here. Oh, like a BMW. <laughs> it doesn't work, Matt. It doesn't work, just like a BMW. <laughs> <laughs> That's German engineering yeah. once again. That's something else you need to have a look at. But that'll most likely just be the switch in there. Yeah, it's probably just the switch. So that's easy to do. Yeah. This, less easy. And I was wondering, what the heck is that in the boot? It came with this weird bag. I think that's one of the original cool boxes. Yes, it is. It's one of the, um, the Porsche cool boxes. Pretty cool. <laughs> oh yeah, look. Oh, yeah, it's a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't mean that at didn't all. Didn't even know that. And we have some oil there because it's a new, I say, a new car to me, but an old car. I, I thought it was just worthwhile travelling with some oil because when the guy brought it down to me, it said low oil. Okay. And then he topped it up, drove a long distance, and no more mention of low oil. That's good. Mm. But why did it say low oil in the first place? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All these things happened, like when he drove it away, like the, the coolant was peeing out of it, and then he got this low oil light, but who we'll, knows? We'll have a look in a minute. Yeah. Let's shut this. It's quite easy to shut. Yeah. That's why I moved my head quite quickly. <laughs> this thing just decided to film me then. All right then, Lewis, let's have a look at the left-hand side. So what can you spot here? Again, you've got some more pin striping, you see that there, look. Oh yeah. yeah there's an, a, one that's a little bit deeper there. Will this kind of stuff just polish out though? I can see I another one. While we're at yeah. it, look at this one. If you keep looking, you'll find more, but. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stop looking, let's <laughs> stop looking, that's enough. <laughs> but yeah, mostly a polish, I think. There's not any sort of real damage as such. Um, other than this, I did spot this earlier. Oh. A bit of a crack there. Right. And a bit of something's pulled back there. Bits are falling out Bits of it. Less, I think that's stones, so you're all right. But that might be an indicator to some one of your body repairs that might have happened, maybe on this door. Yeah, because there seems to have been two. Mm. So maybe one was like here and the yeah. other one was at the back. Maybe the person thought I won't worry about that bit. How about the doors? Have we got yeah, any drop it? OK, uh, level wise. Opens nice and easily. Shuts nicely. Yeah, that one's all right. I can tell this one straight away though. Oh, uh, 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 see, see the level there? Yeah, it, it, it's dropped that as. Yeah, so it'll probably get caught up. I know this already. <laughs> Go on, can you open it even? Just about. <laughs> oh, yeah. blimey, look at that. Yeah, there's quite a gap there, isn't there? Yeah. So it really is just resting on the sill, isn't it? What you can do is in here, Porsche do a kit, you can get spacers. What, that lift at the door? Yeah, so it's actually one or two in there already but you can get uh, you can get different thicknesses which push the bottom of the door out right which enable the level to come higher at the top here so i would need to put another spacer in there yeah and what does it does it like angle the door like this look does it angle it like that it just it pushes it up like at the back uh, okay so that it brings the level back up to where it should be so the level at the front's fine it's just at the back yeah. that it's sort yeah. of dropped down and I, oh yeah so there it's fine because mm -hmm. the gap actually the gaps there are all right aren't they yeah so it'll push that, effectively push that up a little bit. So it's clearly a known problem yeah. if they produce this part for it. Yes. Anything just towards the front here at the wing, anything you can spot? Uh, more, just more pin striping. Yeah, I can see more stripe in there like that. Overall, in terms of the exterior, what are you going to rate it out of 10? Well, I would have gone for maybe an eight, but you didn't wash it, so I'm probably going to go for a seven. So if I wash it, it gets an eight. Yeah. And then if I was to like, 
do those lights, give it a polish. Polish it up. You'd be sort of pushing up to a nine, I reckon. So not bad yeah, for a 2007. There's no real damage as such, apart from that corner we know about. Okay, well, do you know what? I'll take that. I'm going to take it as an eight, not a seven, because I'm just imagining it washed. <laughs> My idea, if it was washed, you'd probably notice some more problems. Yeah, there is that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe okay, don't. Let's move on. <laughs> All right then, Lewis, can you give me your verdict on the interior? From where I'm stored, I think it's quite nice. It is, they do wear well, these cars. It's a bit of a sea of black. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of black. <laughs> Definitely got a different steering wheel here. You've got the optional stitch leather here. Don't see that very often, quite nice. What would it normally be like? Just normal smooth leather without this centerpiece. I've noticed that like, some of the buttons are a little bit worn there, like that. Yeah, they do suffer with the coating coming off. In fairness, yours is actually quite, for the mileage, quite good. So yeah, 86,000 miles. One thing that does annoy me, I don't know if you've noticed it as well, can you see something on the dials? I can, yeah, it's like, it's like someone's cleaned them and whatever they've cleaned with has gone behind. <laughs> yeah, because if I rub that, it doesn't come off. Yeah. So there's like drip marks yeah, behind the dials. Weird. But it's not that someone's clocked it because that's not how you clock one of these no, cars. No. You do it digitally, wouldn't you? I wouldn't know, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. Is there anything else you need to check? I mean, all the electrics seem to work. Electric like that seems to work. In um, and out like that. I do have one question for you though. There's like these weird little buttons here, just on the back of the steering wheel. Now, ideally, I would like those to change gear rather than these horrible, blooming, tiptronic, oh, these rockers are awful. What do they do? I have no idea what this little button, <laughs> and there's another one on the other side, does. Believe it or not, and the lights, okay. they control the brightness of these buttons. What? There's one either side, they do the same thing. So they yeah. both do the brightness, yep. they do the same thing, and that'd be the perfect place for some paddles, but instead we have these stupid rocker switches. Yeah. Oh, the car's beeping. Your key battery's flat. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's just come on, Rob. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, some nice sticky buttons on your PCM. Uh, let's have a look, map. Where are we? We're definitely not there. It thinks, where does oh. it think we are? Germany? It's lost its mind. Somewhere, I reckon, somewhere near a little, in France somewhere. We're in France? Yeah. That's where it broke. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it broke somewhere in France. Whilst we're here, we might as well have a look, see if the reversing camera is working. So I did notice you had it. Okay, so it's uh, not showing um, anything on the screen. It's showing some sort of... Blackness. Blackness, yeah. Right, let, let me just have a look. So, oh look, there's the reversing camera. Yeah, it pops out. Well, tell me if you can see something. If I do this. Uh, I can feel the wires. I can't, I can't see anything, Matt. Oh, I saw some legs. Has it gone again? Yeah, it's gone again. Is it there? No. Anything? Oh, yeah, it's gone again. Oh, there you go. Is it there? Yeah, I can see you. Okay, tell me if it goes. Yeah, I can see you. Okay, so I've wiggled the wire that's just in there. Okay, let's have a look at what you're seeing. I can see you now. Well, I can't see you. I can see the uh, It floor. works! <laughs> The parking sensors work as well. Yeah, I can the hear parking them. sensors, I can hear them beeping. <laughs> so put it into drive to make the camera go away. Hey! We now know that the parking sensors work. The camera pops out and it can have an image as long as you push the wire to the right. So you've got a little bit of a loose connection going on there. That shouldn't be too hard to fix there, right? Shouldn't be too difficult. I'll get that working because it's quite handy. Okay, anything else in here? I must say, I really do like the Alcantara yeah, headlining. This is really nice, isn't it? And overall, the quality of the leather in here, it's, it's warmer, like you say. Is there any, yeah. any bits that you can spot that I just want to mark it down for? You have got a little hole in the seat there, like someone's dropped something on it at some point. Oh dear. Which is a bit of a shame. Is there anything else you need to check? Uh, let's have a look in the glove box. That's always a good idea. Dampers work nice. Oh, can they go a little bit soggy? Yeah, sometimes they can. Blimey, Matt, that's a heavy... Uh... <laughs> 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 Looks like you've got a pretty substantial book pack here. Obviously over time those can go missing. Okay, so the service history, I've left that at home. Oh, okay. So the important bit. The important bit, but, what's that noise? Well, uh, we've been in here a while, the battery started to go low. Okay. <laughs> um, Let's turn that off. So I do have the service history, it appears to be full. What else we got in the glove box? What else we got in the glove box? Headlight removal tool, not in the toolkit. Not in the, that's where it should be. The modern cars don't have that, do they? No. Because um, if they did, people wouldn't have to rip the wings open to um, steal the headlights, which is the craze at the moment, isn't it? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's put that back. And is there anything else in there? What's this? Oh, no, a bit of trim. Bit Where's of that trim. come from? Tuning, memory. That's not from this car, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need that, then. <laughs> There's no Porsche part number on there. I don't know what that's from. Right. Let's just put it just, back. That's good, though, isn't it? It's a spare part for someone else's car. Yeah. How about the cupboards? Do they all work? Yeah, this is all good. 
So you've got two uh, centre console lids there. There's some of my wires there. Do you know what's really awkward? 12 volt sockets all the way down in the footwell. Yeah, they were. And sometimes they have them in here. If you've got the smoking pack, they're in here. What's that? Where? What's that? Guess, guess the trim. <laughs> Something's fallen off somewhere. I think it's this. What's that? This is the sunglasses holder. Oh, the switch is gone, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. So yeah, that goes in there. there. It looks like it's broken. Of course it's broken. Seats will work. And I can vouch for the heated seats, they'll work. Yes, it was very warm when I got in it. So overall, apart from the sat nav. It's, and, yeah, it's good. And the hole in the seat and that little bit of trim. It's good for, for the mileage. It's nice. Okay, let's check out the back seats. Let's do it. Okay then, Lewis, one thing I noticed about the KN is it's not as big as the modern KN in the back. Like the amount of knee room no. you've got isn't huge. No, but one thing, it is very comfortable. The seats are really comfortable. But do they work? Because I know they like fold out, but does it all work properly? Do you want to just test where you can pull the seats? So you have to pull that there. Pull that up. Pull that up. Then that flips out. That flips out. Same for this side, but you get both the middle bit as well on this side. And then you flop the back down. Yeah. And then you can pop, yeah. Do the honours, make sure it works. I only want to know if one side works. <laughs> Will that go with the headrest? I don't understand. No, you have to take the headrest out. Oh. It's a bit of a shame, really. But... I did, so press that. And then that comes, that probably hasn't been done ever. And then that goes down like that. So yeah, it's quite That's quite, quite practical, flat. isn't it? Yeah. This is all nice. Mm. And obviously this is for your child seat, isn't yep, it? That fussing on. Let's put it back. <laughs> So do you want to put the headrest back in there? Or are you gonna, oh, you gonna you make can it... do it in there. Are you sure? Yeah, there is just about enough room. Put that back. Does this go? How do you get so that back in? And then just go. Okay. German engineering. Yes. One thing <laughs> I did notice actually, which is really, really good, it's got Isofix on the front passenger seat as well, yeah. which is really unusual, yeah, yeah, especially for... if a car this age. Exactly, yeah. Anything else we've got back here? So it's always worth looking at these. these are nearly always broken from uh, children in the back. So you've got um, heated seats on this as well, Matt, which is um, unusual. That's it's nice. an option. Cup holder. Wow. That no one stood on. Do they normally good. do these get broken quite Again, easily? little kids in the back. Really? <laughs> How'd you tread on that snap? What's that? <laughs> What's that for? That, that's the uh, cigarette lighter or the 12 volt socket in the back. Oh, that's so I can use that one rather than the, yeah, the one in the footwell. Yeah. But um, you might need a new flap. I'll just put it back in. No one will know. You've broken my car, Lewis. <laughs> you owe me a new flap. There you go. There you <laughs> go. Your flap's back. <laughs> Is there anything beneath it? No, no, that's just a cover plate, that one. All right, OK. I mean, that's pretty much the interior done. What do you rate it overall on the inside? I really like it. I like these old cans. They, they, they really wear well. I think you've got a good example. A few bits and pieces. Probably an eight. An yeah. eight? Yeah. What, what do you need for a 10? We've well, got no flap. <laughs> I've got a flap, it's just, you just don't touch it. OK, Lewis, let's have a look underneath the bonnet. Okay. And, you know, I told you that the guy, when he was delivering it, had to top it up with oil. Has this got anything maybe to do with it? That uh, might be something to do with it, yeah. You seem to kind of quite a lot of oil staining around this cap. Why? I, my best guess would be the seal's probably gone on this cap. It's quite wet, isn't it? So, basically, under pressure that all comes out. Yeah, you can see it all pooling around the top there. Right, and over time... Yeah, it's dribbling down. Right, OK, yeah. so hopefully that is the um, reason for lower oil. Hopefully. I wouldn't <laughs> expect to lose that much. Oh. But um, hopefully. Mm. OK, looking under there, though, there wasn't any kind of like mayonnaise, so we don't no, think we've got like, water mixing no, or anything no, like that. that now, I did notice quite a strong smell of coolant when I was driving it, and when the guy actually delivered it, mm -hmm. it was peeing out of coolant from somewhere underneath. Yep. Then I like lifted off the coolant top and it all exploded and went over here, as you can that's see. That's the stains there, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's the stains there. But you spent a week with the car. Is there anything you found? The current tank is under here. You can't really see it without taking all this out, but this uh, current tank is made of two parts. So it's two parts stuck together yep. and that seam is leaking. Why do they make it of two parts? Don't know. They have to make it out of something, I guess. So but it's leaking. You found out that it's leaking. It's leaking. I used a pressure test on it and you can see the coolant coming out. So right. it's not that, okay. it's that. Uh, these cars can sometimes have problems with their coolant pipes, which can be a bit of an yes. arse. Yeah. But it's not that, you don't think? No, I don't think it's that. Got it hot, had a good sniff around in here for any smell of coolant. Couldn't smell any. Okay. So get which, that done first. Which is a lot cheaper. Yes. Okay. And easier. Is there anything else you noticed while you were under here? The brakes when I had it in. Did you notice the brakes? Yes. The pedal went away from you? So, so basically what I found is there's no servo assistance at low speed, but when you're going faster, it seems to be fine. What, what's causing that? So I felt that 
and straight away I thought there's a vacuum issue somewhere. Oh. And it is, there's a pipe at the top here, which is, uh, which is leaked, it's cracked, we should say, just in here. So you've got a pipe, which, what does that do? So that, the vacuum pump is on the back here and the vacuum line comes off it here and that was completely split. Oh, so okay, it, so you weren't getting any vacuum from the engine. That's it, yeah. To operate the servo assistance. That's correct. Obviously, when you're getting quicker, you're getting more suction, so it kind of just about works. And you fix that with... Well, well I, I haven't fixed it. I've uh, temporarily repaired it with some gaffer tape for you, Matt. Okay, so the brakes will work yeah. okay now, but it's something that needs to be fixed pretty blooming quickly. Yeah, sharpish. Right, we've got the car up in the air on a ramp and charging the battery <laughs> so that we can start it and go for a test drive. Now, Lewis, I can see straight away something yep. that doesn't look great, and it is oiliness here. Yes, Lots of oiliness. That's quite wet, that, Matt. Oh, thanks. <laughs> What's that? That's not the engine leaking, is it? Please don't be the engine leaking. Please don't. That is probably linked to your oil consumption. Oh, no. Looking at that, it looks like one of your turbo pipes. Oh, it's dripping. You see the little drip yeah. there on the bottom? It's just there, isn't it? That's it, yeah. And that's, that's a cool. turbo pipe just in there. Fairly <gasps> well-known thing. OK, so that could be the slight oil consumption and this, not the actual crankcase leaking. Yeah. And that's common? Not common, but it, we've seen them before. Right, OK. So you'd probably end up with either a seal or a pipe just to seal that back up. Yeah. I have actually noticed that when you start it, you get like a puff of smoke. Mm -hmm. Doesn't smoke for anything more than like five seconds, but it's like a boof. Yeah. I'm a little bit worried about bore scoring because these yeah. engines can bore score. You're probably more likely to find there's a bit of pooling behind that turbo. Okay. And you get in that initial, initial bit of oil burn. Right. Which is what you're seeing. How about the underside in general? What do you think? It's not that rusty, really, is it? It's not. There's quite a lot of surface rust, but that's quite normal of a car this age. But, but the bolts, look, they're not seized. No, no, they're, they're pretty OK, aren't they, really? I've seen some, and they're in way worse condition with the same kind of mileage, which makes me think it's never been off-road. So you don't think this car's been off-road? No. Well, tell you the truth, like I say, it's mainly spent its life in London. It's just yeah. in, like, its later year, it was down by the coast in Exeter Way. Tyres are a bit... Ugh, I need yeah. new tyres, yes. Have yeah. you uh, been driving it hard, Matt? Um, no, no? Um, I think it's just come that way. I've hardly just driven it. Up. Okay, I don't know how old they are. So we definitely need some new tyres by yeah. the looks of that. They're the wrong wheels anyway, so yeah. I'm going to put the right wheels on it, sort all that out. Is there anything like play in any of the, the wheels? Or no, I did, I did have suspension? a look at it and it's all pretty tight. It's yeah. Did all the usual movements. There's no play in any of these joints here. And the suspension airbags up there, they're all fine? They're all good. I mean, they're switched off at the minute because they're on the ramp. Okay. No, no leaks there. Oh, you can get a leak from the central transfer case? You can do. It's pretty much like any other car, really. It's a car of this age. You might get a bit of a weep, but this one's bone dry. It's really good nick underneath. It is actually really good condition. Have you seen some rotters? I have seen some rotters, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some that are normally ones that have been off-road. How about the rear suspension? How's all that? So you've got a little bit more corrosion at the back, as you normally see with these, because of all the salt and stuff. It's still pretty solid. You can still see some of the paint. Oh paint yeah, on there. that's good. That's good. Yeah, nothing's screaming out. There's no like new components that are going, oh, it's been in an accident or anything. And you looked at the brakes and everything. Mm -hmm. They don't need replacing? No, I mean, they've got wear. I'd say about 50%. Considering the age, right? Considering 2007, age, what do you reckon? At 10? I'd probably go for an eight with the potential. If you do the work on it, potential of getting a nine. Sort out those turbo pipes. Yeah, tyres, get rid of all that. Yeah. You're looking at a pretty straight car under there. It's looking good. Mm. But we need to check out those fault codes now. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that could be make or break, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what, break the bank? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do it. We've got the car connected to Porsche's fault code reader. Let's see what we've got here. Yeah, you've got a few, Matt. Thermostat stuck open. Yes. That's pretty self-explanatory, that one, isn't it? Yeah, and I experienced that by the fact that the car wouldn't get up to temperature on the motorway, and I also had a fault code with the, with the car's coolant system, so that's what that is. Yeah, that's the same as any other car, really. The only ones that really matter, valve lift control bank one, yes. the thermostat, which yep. will require some work, it's got to get that done, otherwise the engine won't run properly. Yep. Now, could the thermostat affect the valve lift at all? Or not really? Not really, no. Okay, right. The other thing could be... You know, I so said there's that puff of smoke on startup, which could be the, um, the turbo pipes. Yeah. Could it be if the car isn't um, recirculating unburnt fuel? It's hard to say without doing a full investigation. Probably most likely is just the actual valve itself. Maybe a lack of oil pressure behind it or something like that. Oh. Would we notice it on a test drive if it's like quite a big problem? Yeah. Did you 
notice anything when you drove it? No, it seems no. fine. Paul's hard. And you know what? What we should get and do is test drive it yeah. and then take it from there. And if the test drive is fine, the car runs okay, we can probably just pretend that's not a real problem and maybe investigate it at a later date. Well, do you know what we're going to do now? We're going to drive it and hope for the best that it drives smoothly and there's no stuttering. Or what would a um, valve issue manifest it? How would you experience it? You might get a slight hesitation, something like that. Uh -huh. A little stutter. Right. Okay, well, let's go drive it and find out if it drives good. Right, and here we go. Final thing, driving my KN. This is uh, taking me back a bit, Matt. How does it feel? It's quick, isn't it? It's still got 500 horsepower. And it's... the most important thing is we're coming to a red light here and it's Brakes. stopping properly. They, they feel all right now. A little bit of tape can work wonders. But not permanently. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> you can't leave it like that, no, can no. you? One thing that I noticed just sitting in it, the aircon's working. Aircon's lovely, especially today. It's actually quite warm. Another thing, pick up when you're pulling away really smooth oh yeah super strong and another thing i'm sensing with my bottom the suspension feels brilliant i thought you were going to say i'd put the heated seat on no but, uh, <laughs> as a joke yeah that classic uh, no it does it feels very it's supple compliant there's no knocking we've got it in the normal setting i'll probably run it in comfort so what i'm going to do is put the engine into sport there we go so the gears just changed now i drove the pre-facelift version and it didn't have that sport button so you really had to like slam the throttle if you wanted the full k and turbo experience whereas this it's nice to have that sport button it's just a bit more responsive and i also thought that you get a 50 horsepower difference when you go from the 4.5 to the 4.8 but this 4.8 feels quite a bit stronger than the 4.5 that i tested i think that's probably down to some of the direct fuel injection but it's, it's nice isn't it it is nice it's comfortable it's not making any funny noises i can't even hear any rattles no no rattles proper over-engineered cars these what's it like going overtake the car in front just quickly just floor it see what it goes like we've got a lamborghini urus coming past that's appropriate let's chase <laughs> him then go let's go oh listen to that i listen think that's your that. speed limit there mate <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that really shifts. Yeah, it does. It's it's quick, isn't it? These were super quick when they were new, and they're still super quick. <sighs> Love it. I, even by today's standards. Oh yeah. This feels quick. Definitely. So I've got a BMW X5 E53. That's a 4.4 natural aspirated V8. It doesn't feel quick. No. And it uses fuel at the same rate as this, but this is way faster, okay. and it feels more modern to drive this as well. I mean, overall, how it drives, does it feel baggy in any way, shape, or form, or does it feel pretty? tight it still feels tight you can do this with a wheel it's still directional there's a bit of flex on those massive tires that you've got on it but it drives like it should what other things do you look out for when you're driving in these the, the gearbox i mean can they clunk and normally they're fine which this one is it's a good shift pattern there's no banging into gears none of that it's smooth how about the geometry does it feel like it's pulling yeah. to one side or the other no it doesn't i can let off momentarily it's not pulling to one side haven't done a brake test under full load or anything yet there's nothing to suggest that it's going to pull to one side and this car has a locking central diff and i know that you could optionally have a rear diff as well but i don't think this has it no well the light doesn't come on when i try no. to press it that confuses a lot of people they go it doesn't work but the light only comes on if you've got it optioned. Overall, you've driven this car. What would you rate the driving experience? I mean, it's not a lot different to what they were when they were new, so it's going to be a nine. So you get nine for driving, yeah. underside marked it highly, and the interior you like as well, and the exterior just needs a polish and a bit of a touch-up. I'd drive it. You want to sell it? <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm good at buying cars. Mm. I'm rubbish at selling though. Yeah. Overall then, you marked each area individually. What would you give it overall out of 10 my seven thousand pounds kn turbo 2007 i think i'd say a strong eight and a half sort out the exterior get that polished you could get it up to a nine nine i mean this was totally a blind buy and i was worried about the fault code that was coming up with the engine and worried about that coolant leak but they're not as bad as i thought nine out of ten for a completely wild card probably shouldn't have bought it but did anyway kind of thing I am so, so happy. Do you know what? I'm genuinely surprised how good this is. Why do you think this is going to be an absolute heap? Yeah, I thought I was going to pull it apart, but it's actually really good. <laughs> it's great now, but you never know with these old cars, there could be something that happens that just could be catastrophic in terms of uneconomical to repair. That's the fun of a modern classic. <laughs> That's why it's £7,000, right? was £85,000, but all the parts that you need and the labour to fix them, they're still at the £85,000 mark, aren't they? Yeah. And the consumables, like tyres and all that kind of stuff. 
and people forget that. Thank you very much, Lewis, for That's all right. giving the car the once over. I'm sure it's taking you back. Uh, yeah, taking me right back. <laughs> and you know what? We'll end the video here because I don't want it to suddenly break down <laughs> and it to suddenly be demoted to a one out of 10. Anyway, I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you did, give it a like. Click on the windows for some more videos. And if you want to see what happens next to this vehicle, or some of my other vehicles, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. I've got some amazing things coming up that you don't want to miss, so subscribe.